Right then, guys. Now this is going to be a little bit different. This is uh, extreme knowledge. If you like, if you don't work as an HGV technician, you probably won't come across large vehicles. HGV technicians, obviously, you know about air brakes. But if you are in a situation grid down, apocalypse type, no rule of law, and you have to move a vehicle for one reason or another, whether it's for acquiring commodities or you have to move it out of the way, okay, uh, you don't have the keys to the vehicle, then you have to find a different way of doing it. Recovery drivers will wind brakes off, and this is what we call it in the trade, is winding the brakes off, or the brake chambers, to release the park brake, or the spring brake, so that leaves the brakes disabled in the parking facility, okay. So how does an HGV work? Well, generally what we have on board uh, a unit like this, any of them, they'll have an air compressor. It fills up air tanks, reserve tanks, and then as you apply the foot brake, it pushes air down to the uh, brake chamber and applies the brakes, okay? That's quite easy. Actually, there's a lot more involved in that, but that's generally what it does, okay? Now, it's the park brake that is more important because that relies on no air, okay? Because it's mechanical, like your car, when you pull your, your handbrake up, Okay, that's mechanical. It's the same with trailers and with trucks. Anything with the spring brake chambers on, okay, that's the park brake. And you can usually tell that because it's got two chambers on it, yeah? So, what happens is when you have your, your park, okay, and you pulled your vehicle into park, yeah, I'll just show you this, this thing here. You pulled it into park, that vents the air out of the brake chambers, yeah? If a lorry has no air in it, it will be the same thing. The brake chambers will, or the spring brakes will apply themselves. Okay, that's the trouble you have. So what I'm gonna do is teach you about winding brake chambers off. And this is actually quite serious because you don't wanna be messing about with brakes unless you are in a mad, mad situation, Mad Max situation where you need a fuel tanker, something like that. And you have to uh, split the unit and the trailer. So you've got your own <laughs> vehicle to move. The, the tanker or you can tow it with something else okay which is highly unlikely a loaded uh, vehicle but there might be a time when you need to move it out of the way just simply as that so chalk wheels when you're winding brakes off okay and be very very cautious about it because these vehicles are very heavy okay so i'm going to explain a little bit more about the brake chamber you'll understand about that it's a little bit of prep and knowledge for you mechanical prep and knowledge because don't forget when you are uh, a mechanic as such where you've got a toolbox and you have all these little problems to solve and this is one of them yeah you watch any movie 28 days later 28 weeks later yeah the roads are chock-a-block aren't they they're just scattered with vehicles everywhere and if you want to acquire something you're either going to have to find a way around it to, to get it aren't you or you're going to have to pull it out of the way yeah generally the heavy stuff is always for the heavy guys there'll always be somebody with the knowledge somewhere but if you haven't got that guy you are that guy that's as simple as that okay now i've left this till after the canadian truckers preppers um prepper <laughs> protesters sorry i've left this video till after them and simply because i don't want anybody knowing how to do it and getting themselves killed at the wrong time yeah sit down uh, a grid down the shit hits the fan situation it's a completely different ball game isn't it you kill yourself that's tough shit at the end of the day isn't it nobody's liable are they a little bit of knowledge actually is very harmful uh more knowledge is okay now what can i teach you about hgvs <laughs> what do you want to know yeah actually no if you want to know all about hgvs go and work in the trade yeah there are vacancies everywhere in the uk for mechanics at the moment but a little bit of knowledge that'll get you out of the ship might just save your life or save the life of a community, just like they did in Mad Max, remember? Yeah, they had that tanker, didn't they, in the truck? <laughs> okay, so, anyway, enjoy. Right then, as I said, there is a compressor which needs to supply air constantly to the vehicle, supply reserve tanks, and usually have a gauge in the cab which will show you how much air you have in the tanks, usually about 10 bar on a DAF. You see where Chimp is up on the left hand side, 
near his head there are air processing valves there are also brake valves that are involved with braking it's not just a simple reserve tank to foot brake yeah there's a lot to it but we'll keep it really simple trailers have a control valve a modulator and a valve okay and the, they supply air to the brake chambers and this is what we need to talk about because this is the key component to it okay Front axle, okay, well this could be anywhere, this is a single acting chamber, this is on a drive axle which also is single acting chamber which only works with the foot brakes, so it's the brakes free running until you put your foot on the brake and then it will operate, okay, yeah, fairly simple, whereas this is a spring brake chamber, okay, you need air in it constantly to keep the park brake spring off, well, the wheels are running free, and then when you put your foot brake on, the front chamber, when it's got air in it, will uh, put the foot brake on, okay? It's as simple as that from this point of view. You have a truck and trailer, for instance, because this will have the most amount of brakes. Maybe all three axles will have spring brakes on, whereas the unit may only have spring brakes on the rear axle, but if they're heavier, they will also have spring brakes on the front axle, okay? So a trailer connection, you have a service line, which is yellow, and an emergency line, which is red okay now some of these are charged with there some aren't but that is the foot brake signal and then this is the emergency air which is the air supply to the trailer no air supply means the brakes will come on that's also a breakaway facility EBS ABS lead here is only electronic signals to uh, get braking efficiency but it's these two which are important so on a trailer you have a park and shunt valve okay pull the park and what happens it evacuates the air out of the rear chamber and the, the brake via a spring is applied okay so the brakes go on you push the park in and it gives air back to the chamber via the emergency line and you'll see the brakes come off okay that's with air if you have air okay now these are uh, drum brakes now it does take a time for them to charge up and the brakes handbrakes come off so here's a brake chamber. This has a, uh, this is spring brake chamber. In the rear here, you have a spring diaphragm. Okay, that's the park facility from this way back. So when the air is in on the emergency side, which is this black line, it pushes a spring via a diaphragm. Okay, so it's ready to roll. Okay, this yellow line here uh, is where the foot brake is, and that's only operates the brake brake when your foot brake is a Applied, okay via the Susie's if the Susie's are not connected the brakes will be on the trailer but it could be the service line which is an air supply or it could be the spring brakes holding the brakes on that is an unknown because trailers are manufactured differently not to worry about that so when you pull the park on in a unit it applies the spring brake chambers in the unit or the prime mover or the truck depending on what you got but the trailer acts differently while it's connected, it very much depends on the vehicle, the towing vehicle, because DAFs, for instance, will charge the service line when the park brake is on, whereas Scania's won't, or Volvo's don't anyway. So uh, this one here, the air is actually charged, so the brakes are on the trailer as well. The emergency line is connected, okay, so the spring brakes will not have been applied, so you see that there's air in that part, whereas this one, it's not until I let this off that the uh, spring brake chambers will apply themselves now this is a park and shunt facility it's not on all trailers but uh, you pull that that the park is applied okay if you push both of those buttons the brakes will be uh, disengaged so they will roll if it has air in the trailer so usually what we find uh, we've either got drum brakes or disc brakes now you can see here is a spring brake chamber on discs yeah this also is disc brake, same arrangement, it all is the same, spring brake, uh, the body, and then the front part, which is the service, okay. Back part, never disassemble that because it's got a huge spring in it, whereas this one you can undo. You can actually uh, undo that and change the brake chamber if you need to. But this has been disengaged at the moment, the park spring has been disengaged. Whereas this one, a similar sort of thing, different type of brake chamber, it's actually got air in there down the emergency line, which will release the brakes, so the brakes are rolling. Okay, if you apply the service, it will apply the foot brake, or if you disconnect the air from the front of the trailer, the brakes will come on. Okay, so these are piston-style brake chambers, okay, which, is, yeah, they're actually more expensive, but... 
that's what you'll find on rear axles uh, on discs or drums whereas this one here okay this one is drum brakes difference is it has a slack adjuster camshaft and you can see the brake drum there but they all operate the same way okay so you can see the drum there where my foot's pointing to the slack adjuster basically connected to a rod yeah it just pushes the brakes on as it's been applied so this type of vehicle will have a combination of discs and drums this is an 8x4 it's got two drive axles on it tanker okay so it might well have two sets of anchor locks front and rear okay or on the rear it depends the configurations are not always the same but these you have to recognize our brake drums now i have some uh, caging tools which are basically for disengaging spring brake chambers or a type of spring brake chambers now this is a spring brake chamber but a cheaper type we call them anchor locks so you have a body and then you have a banding okay the rear part here you never disengage because it's got a spring like a car front spring okay so once it's been disengaged the wheel will roll free so the tool is fit in the back and wound up so what i'm going to do here is demonstrate it and it's actually quite tedious because uh, yeah the winding of it takes a little bit of time so the t-piece there okay uh you put it in and turn it so it engages this is a standard tool that comes with every single brake chamber whether you find them on the vehicle or not well yeah i take them off to be honest with you because they're never used but in an emergency you can always find them because not everybody does that so what i'm doing here putting the rod in and i will now wind it off which takes quite a while and then as you see time lapse and all that business i've wound off enough now to pull the spring back so it will disengage the brake yeah so that's free same thing here with um, this type of anchor lock there is the stowage for the tool you can always find them okay whereas this type here the piston brake there is a nut which you can wind off on the rear there so that's a lot easier so in a survival situation, and I mean a serious SHTF, where you have a truck which is disabled, you can wind the trailer legs down, disconnect it, wind the brakes off on the rear axle, for instance, uh, disconnect the fifth wheel, and then pull the unit out of the way so you can put another truck underneath it. Or use a towing vehicle if you disable all the park brake facilities on the the trailer and the truck or just the truck depending on what you need to acquire and then tow it but just remember when there are no brakes there are no brakes unless you are using air and then you don't need to use the wind off tools okay so it's a little bit of education that i've imparted to you use it wisely right thanks for watching i hope that's clear it's probably as clear as mud to some people but you never know how things pan out hopefully you'll never need to know any of this knowledge or maybe you do maybe you'll uh, become an hgv technician who knows <laughs> anyway until the next video i shall see you later i've now got to go and put a clutch in a land rover <laughs> great a good fun that's about 14 hours work you know so uh, i've got two left tonight because i've nearly finished my night shift as you can see it's dark out there and then monday morning because it's friday today yes uh, we'll be uh, we'll be cracking on with that and no i will not be making a whole video on how to do a land rover clutch because it's long-winded yeah. anyway be seeing you later